Hello and welcome to the ninth week of season 23, Season of the Wish, starting on January 23rd, 2024. So, for week 9, let's get going with our legacy rotation, starting with the Forsaken expansion. Ready if you are. Let's see what's out there. The Dreaming City this week is at a medium curse level, which means Petrovenge can be found in the Davilian Mist, and has the Oracle Engine mission for the next week. The Blind World features Hive enemies and the Plague, Kregar. The Ascendant Challenge this week will be the Chimera Garrison, which can be located over in the Chamber of Starlight Lost Sector on the Dreaming City. Next up, the Shadowkeep expansion. On the moon, the weekly story mission is a mysterious disturbance. The Trove Guardian and the Wandering Nightmare, the Nightmare of Hawkis, are both located in the Anchor of Light. And the Nightmare Hunts this week will be Fogoth, Fear, Ghoul, Rage, and Tanix Isolation. For our Beyond Light expansion, on Europa this week, Phylax the Warrior will be the Empire Hunt, Asterion's Abyss will be the Eclipse Zone, and the Exo Change will be Agility. For the 30th Anniversary expansion, Dares of Eternity Legendary rounds are Taken, Kabul, and for the final round, Zydron. The Loot Rotation will be on Week 4's Rotation, with the Scatterhorn Armor Set and the Pathfinder Armor Set being available. The weapons available this week will be the Stasis Precision Frame Shotgun Fractithis, the Solar High Impact Frame Auto Rifle Chrysura Milo, the Stasis Precision Frame Hand Cannon Vogue Picula, the Arc Precision Frame Bow Wolf Tone Draw, the Solar High Impact Frame Fusion Rifle Iotona Draconis, the Solar Rapid Fire Frame Heavy Grenade Launcher Canis Major, the Arc Vice Rapid Fire Frame Scout Rifle Contingency Plan, the Kinetic High Impact Frame Pulse Rifle Legal Action 2, the Solar Rapid Fire Frame Heavy Grenade Launcher Outrageous Fortune, the Void Adaptive Frame Sword Steel Syllabus C14, and the Kinetic Lightweight Frame Sidearm Spoiler Alert. For the Witch Queen expansion, the Witch Queen Weekly Story Mission is the last chance, where the modifier is Martyr, as well as Barrier and Unstoppable Champions. Also this week you'll have Altar of Reflections Catalyst, and Altar of Reflections Insight. The Wellspring activity has been updated to include a featured Throne World weapon, Veritas Armor, and a weapon pattern as its rewards. For the Lightful expansion, the weekly mission is Breakneck, with extra shields, block loadouts, and extra champions. Barrier, Overload, and Unstoppable champions, Void Threat, Pestilence, Kinetic Overcharge, Stasis and Solar Surges, with Overcharge Rocket Launchers, and Galvanized on Hero Difficulty only. The Partition mission will be Ordnance, Pontes Mode enabled with Overload and Unstoppable Champions, Solar Threat, Arkenstrand Shields, Air Superiority Modifier with Solar and Stasis Surges. And the Vex Incursion this week will be Umsha Park. In addition, the Weekly Lightful Reset also refreshes the Pinnacle Drop for the Node Override Avalon Exotic Mission on the EDC. For the Season of the Deep, all three fishing ponds are now exotic all week. Raids and Dungeons the Krota's End Raid Challenge this week is the third encounter, Iyut, the Death Singer, called Equal Vessel. All six players must rotate the Chalice of Light buff in the same order throughout the entire fight. Each player cannot hold the Chalice again before all five other players have. Plus, if you complete the weekly challenge on Master, you'll get an Adept Weapon. The Adept Weapon you get is a random drop, but works on a knockout system. You will get a new one with every challenge you complete every week until you've unlocked them all. The Root of Nightmares Raid Challenge this week is the fourth encounter, Nezarek, called All Hands. Each player in your fire team must trigger one node on each side before the damage phase begins. The King's Fall Raid Challenge this week is the first encounter, Totems, called The Grass is Always Greener. Players cannot take the same brand type twice in a row. The Vow the Disciple Challenge this week is the first encounter, Acquisition, called Swift Destruction, where Guardians must kill all champions within a few seconds of each other on all rounds. The Vault of Glass Challenge this week is the second encounter, Oracles, called The Only Oracle for You. Players cannot destroy the same Oracle more than once. The Deep Zone Crypt Challenge this week is the third encounter, Tanix Part 1, called Of All Trades. Guardians must perform each role at least once, Operator, Scanner and Suppressor. And the Last Wish Challenge this week is the first encounter, Kali, called Summoning Ritual. Players must activate and cleanse all 9 plates, then kill all 9 knights and ogres before damaging Kali. Your pinnacle raid will be the Garden of Salvation over on the moon, which means all challenges will be available for each encounter. These are the first encounter, Embrace, called to the top. This is where you must not kill the Cyclopses that spawn near the Consecrated Mine. The second encounter, Spy Defense, called A Link to the Chain. This is where all Guardians must receive the Enlightened buff at the same time. The third encounter, Consecrated Mine, called Staying Alive, where you must not kill the spawning Cyclopses in the first two rooms. And the fourth encounter, Sanctified Mine, called Zero to 100, where you must fully fill each Conflux with 30 moats within 10 seconds of initially banking the first set of moats. 
Also, with the Gun of Salvation being the featured raid, this does mean that you might be able to find a team to guide you through the final part of the Divine Fragment quest and raid puzzles to collect the exotic trace rifle Divinity. The Pinnacle Dungeon will be the Spire of the Watcher over on the Throne World. And our exotic mission rotator will be Vox Obscura, with the Dead Messenger exotic grenade launcher being the main reward. Craftable weapons available from this mission include the Solar Waveframe Grenade Launcher Explosive Personality, the Stasis Rapid Fire Frame Machine Gun Recurrent Impact, the Void Precision Frame Bow Under Your Skin, the Arc Rapid Fire Frame Ultra Rifle Sweet Sorrow, the Stasis Adaptive Frame Sniper Thoughtless, and the Kinetic Rapid Fire Frame Pulse Rifle Peace of Mind, with the Tusk Allegiance Armor Set. Next up, Challenges. Dragon's Defender 6. Defeat 125 targets with Pulse Rifles or Scout Rifles. Gain additional progress from Guardian Final Blows and Final Blows within Riven's Layer of the Coil. 4. Challenge XP Plus. Lost in Legend. Complete a Lost Sector on Legend or higher. 4. Challenge XP Plus and Bright Dust. Over Specialize. Get 100 Final Blows with weapons using special ammo in Ritual Activities. Earn bonus progress by defeating Guardians. 4. Challenge XP Plus Plus and Bright Dust. Iron Iron. Complete Crucible Matches. Earn bonus progress in Iron Banner and for Victories. 4. Challenge XP Plus and Bright Dust. Ultimate Champion. Defeat 60 champions in any Nightfall Strike on Hero Difficulty or higher. And bonus progress at higher difficulty tiers. 4. Challenge XP Plus and Bright Dust. And Calibrate Close Range. Calibrate 400 Close Range Weapons. Sidearms, Submachine Guns, Shotguns, Glaives and Swords. Bonus progress for defeating Guardians. 4. Challenge XP Plus Plus and Bright Dust. Hello! Hello. As a reminder, your daily loss sector will show you a flag outside which will give you details of threats, shields, champions and exotic armour you will find inside. But if you're new to the game or using an alternate character and can't find the flag outside, you will have to run through the loss sector normally to have it show up on your map as a legend slash master. Which you can either do solo or with a fire team, but you'll only be able to earn a chance at the exotic drop when completing solo. This season we'll see the introduction of gunsmith engrams, as well as the selection of foundry weapons for completing legend and master loss sectors while solo with Legend being a 70% chance to Master being 100%, assuming the Guardian is thorough enough to leave no champion standing. Thorough completions on Master difficulty will also have the advantage of weapons dropping an additional perk in either the 3rd or 4th column. The weapons available from the Lost Sectors are grouped into 4 weapons per day over 4 days, and after the 4th day the cycle repeats back to the first set. The following weapons will be available from the Lost Sectors during the Season of the Wish. Day 1, the Strand High Impact Frame Fusion Rifle knocks Perennial 5. The Strand Adaptive Frame Auto Rifle Old Sterling, the Solar Rapid Fire Frame Grenade Launcher Marcillion C, and the Stasis Amalon Adaptive Frame Sidearm Sinua SI6. Day 2 The Stasis High Impact Frame Pulse Rifle Cyhomatic 5, the Strand Precision Frame Scout Rifle Glissando 47, the Strand Vice Rapid Fire Frame Sniper Rifle Urakanji, and the Arc Adaptive Frame Sword Nazaruddin. Day 3 The Solar Lightweight Frame Sidearm Heliocentric QSC, the Kinetic Aggressive Frame Sniper Rifle Last Foray, the Arc Aggressive Frame Shotgun Hand in Hand, and the Kinetic Lightweight Frame Pulse Rifle Battle Scar. Day 4, the Nadir Void Adaptive Frame Sword Geodetic HSM, the Arc Aggressive Frame Hand Cannon Combined Action, the Void Waveframe Grenade Launcher Harsh Language, and the Solar Adaptive Frame Auto Rifle Coronature 22. This week's rotation will start on Weapon Set 1 on Tuesday's reset. Tuesday, January 23rd will be Bailed Round Wishes on the Dreaming City for Exotic Chess, Arc Threat, Solar and Stasis Surges, Void Shields, Raider Shield Modifier, Overcharged Snipers with Overload and Unstoppable Champions. Wednesday, January 24th will be Chamber of Starlight on the Dreaming City for Exotic Helmets, Solar Threat, Solar and Stasis Surges, Void and Solar Shields, Epitaph Modifier, Overcharged Swords with Overload and Unstoppable Champions. Thursday, January 25th will be Perdition on Europa for Exotic Boots, Arc Threat, Solar and Stasis Surges, Arc and Void Shields, Chocker Modifier, Overcharge Fusion Rifles with Barrier and Overload Champions. Friday, January 26th will be Bunker E15 on Europa for Exotic Gauntlets, Void Threat, Solar and Stasis Surges, Void Shields, Shocker Modifier, Overcharge Grenade Launchers with Barrier and Overload Champions. Saturday, January 27th will be Concealed Void on Europa for Exotic Chests, Solar Threat, Solar and Stasis Surges, Void and Solar Shields, Arachno Modifier, Overcharge Trace Rifles with Barrier and Overload Champions. Sunday, January 28th will be Thriller Drone on Neptune for Exotic Helmets, Void Threat, Solar and Stasis Surges, Arc and Void Shields, Shocker Modifier, Overcharge Grenade Launchers with Barrier and Overload Champions. 
And finally, back round to Monday, January 29th, will be Gilded Precept on Neptune for Exotic Boots, Arc Threat, Solar and Strand Surges, Void and Solar Shields, Scorched Earth Modifier, Overcharged Glaze with Barrier and Unstoppable Champions. Lead the way. Our ninth featured Nightfall will see us face off against the Taken Hydra Parthenos in the Hypernet Current on Neptune, where you have a chance to get a Pinnacle Engram if you complete the Nightfall with a score of 200k or more. This Nightfall will require you to own the Lightfall expansion to play. You'll be able to earn high-end gear for your characters including the Nightfall featured weapon, exotic gear, enhancement cores, enhancement prisms, ascendant shards and adept Nightfall ciphers. The higher the Nightfall difficulty, the more common the drop will be, with the featured weapon and exotic gear being uncommon at hero difficulty to being common with ascendant shards in Grand Masters. Legend and Low Nightfalls will have 5 Overload and 6 Unstoppable Champions, with 12 Solar, 5 Arc and 28 Void Shields. Masters and GMs will have 7 Overload and 9 Unstoppable, with 12 Solar, 6 Arc and 32 Void Shields. Your Nightfall modifiers are Hero Difficulty, Maximum Effective Level is 1765, Matchmaking is available, Enemies have extra shields, Champions Foe, you'll face Overload and Unstoppable Champions, you can either use Intrinsic Exotics, use a subclass debuff or unlock anti-champion mods from the Seasonal Artifact, Arc Threat, 25% increase to incoming Arc Damage, Epitaph, taking combatants generate Blight Geysers when defeated, Overcharge weapons. Weapons overcharged from a seasonal artifact are active in this activity. Kinetic weapons do increase damage when your subclass element matches an active surge. Solar surge. 25% bonus to outgoing solar damage. Stasis surge. 25% bonus to outgoing stasis damage. Overcharge grenade launchers. 25% bonus damage with grenade launchers. Galvanize. Combats have more health and are more difficult to stun. Legend difficulty. Maximum effective level 1815 includes all previous modifiers except galvanized. No matchmaking. Equipment locked. You will be unable to change your equipment once the mission starts. Master difficulty. Maximum effective level 1820 includes all previous modifiers except galvanized. Champions mob. This difficulty adds more champion enemies. Chafe. The radar is disabled. Grand master difficulty. Maximum effective level 1815 includes all previous modifiers except galvanized. Join in progress disabled. Extinguish. If your fire team falls in a restricted zone, your team is returned to orbit. Limited revives, gain additional revives by defeating champions up to a maximum of 20. And contest mode, which caps your power level to make enemies more of a challenge. To combat champions, you have access to subclass counters as well as a choice of intrinsic anti-champion artifact mods. This season's artifact is the Queen's Force Sensor. The anti-champion mods available this week are Overload Auto Rifle, Overload Pulse Rifle, and Overload Rocket Launcher, Unstoppable Hand Cannon, and Unstoppable Bow. You also have exotic weapons and armor that can help with intrinsic mods as well. For Overload, the Void Energy Bowler Monarch, the Arc Energy Linear Trace Rifle Divinity, the Arc Heavy Machine Gun Thunderlord, and the Warlock Exotic Boots, the Secant Filaments, which when you drop an Empowering Rift, any weapon that is fired from inside the well can cause an Overload Champion to be stunned. For Unstoppable, the Kinetic Fusion Rifle Bastion, the Kinetic Hand Cannon Malfeasance, the Kinetic Scout Rifle Touch of Malice, the Solar Energy Sidearm Devil's Ruin, the Void Heavy Bow Leviathan's Breath, the Titan Gauntlet Sash and Wake, where Fusion Grenade hits stun unstoppable champions, and the Hunter Gauntlet Sathros's Embrace, which have a chance to stun unstoppable champions with their empowered weighted knife. The Nightfall featured weapon to attain this week will be the Solar Position Frame Bow, Priastian X4. The Priastian X4 has a base impact of 76, accuracy of 65, and stability of 40. It can roll with collective action, opening shot, and explosive head. With enlightened action, Perpetual Motion and Archer's Tempo. It has the origin trait of Stunning Recovery, where if you stun a champion you partially refill the magazine, trigger health regen and improve your recovery for a short duration. Vanguard Vindication, where final blows with the weapon grant a small amount of health. And Wildcard, final blows with this weapon have a chance to create experimental sub munitions at the target's location. The 66 control node will be taken over by Valus Forge, as he returns to the tower for the third time this season bringing with him the Iron Banner. This is a week-long free-to-play Crucible event, which means there will be no Trials of Osiris at the weekend. Power level is disabled, meaning you can go into Iron Banner with whatever weapons and armor you would like. Iron Banner also brings with it challenges and a seal to become an Iron Lord. Each day for four days for each character from Tuesday Reset, Lord Saladin will give you the opportunity to receive pinnacle rewards and rank boosts. By hovering over the Iron Banner node on the director, it will show you the two series objectives. Each series has four challenges rolled out daily over the week. Series 1, players can complete Iron Banner matches with no restrictions to earn Iron Banner rank bonus multipliers. 
Series 2, players can earn points in Iron Banner with a specific seasonal subclass equipped to earn Iron Banner Pinnacle rewards. You can either play each day and collect each pinnacle and rank boost, or you can wait until the Friday reset to play all the games you need to receive all the pinnacles and boosts in one go. To receive the rank boost you will have to play 3, 7, 12 and 18 games in total for all 4 boosts. And to receive the pinnacles you will have to get 50, 125, 225 and 350 points whilst having a specific seasonal subclass equipped. As a reminder pinnacle rewards will give you plus 5 to your power level if you are below the power cap of 1800. But if you are 1800 trying to reach the pinnacle cap of 1810, then the pinnacles will give you plus 2 in light. Players can rank up with Lord Saladin to receive rewards from his reward track, and equipping any Iron Banner armor, ornament or weapon plus Iron Banner emblem will progress your progress faster in ranking up. This is multiplied if you complete the daily boost as well. For the Iron Banner gear boost requirements, all 5 pieces must be equipped as gear or ornament for it to take effect. In Iron Banner Fortress, two teams of 6 are pitted against each other with the objective to control three stationary objective points scattered around the arena, just like in a regular control match. However, these work a little differently. In Fortress you earn points for each zone you hold on to at regular time intervals. If you have one zone you get 2 points, 2 zones you get 4 points, or 3, a power play, you get 6 points. Killing enemies does not count towards your points, keeping objectives does. So if you want to win the match, take and hold those zones. Conversely, it also doesn't matter how often you're getting killed if the enemy team isn't grabbing the zone from you. When a team reaches 40 points, a high value zone will spawn a countdown timer at a marked location somewhere on the map, and the other three zones will disappear. This is where Empress Keitel of the Cabal decides to intervene. When this happens, you should drop whatever you're doing and run to the capture point. But be careful as giant Cabal drop pods will hit the ground, opening to reveal yellow bar turrets called Esteem Scorpius. You'll need to defeat these turrets to open the high value zone which grants more points when your team controls it, which can really turn the tide of battle. After 45 seconds the high value zone will despawn, and the three normal objectives will return. You will have two opportunities per match to capture the Cabal zone, one at 40 points and the other at 80. The game will then continue until the score reaches its max or you hit the 10 minute time limit. With Iron Banner's return this also means you have another chance to become an Iron Lord by completing 7 triumphs. These are Jolder's Victory win matches in the Iron Banner playlist across all events and seasons. Ganora's Seal, acquire Iron Banner armor. Each armor piece must be unique to count towards the total. Ormond's Taste, acquire Iron Banner weapons. Each weapon must be unique to count towards the total. Allwing Spirit, earn points by completing objectives in the Iron Banner playlist modes. Frostmire's Will, complete Iron Banner challenges. Grimmel's Dedication, reset Iron Banner rank twice. Joram's Howl, Complete Iron Banner matches whilst wearing at least one piece of Iron Banner armor. An additional progress for each piece of Iron Banner armor equipped. And to gild the title this season you have 5 triumphs to complete. Which are Glorious Hell, win Iron Banner matches, an additional progress for each piece of Iron Banner armor equipped. Again with Feeling, reset Iron Banner rank. On Point, earn points by completing objectives in the Iron Banner playlist modes whilst using a Strand, Solar, Arc or Void subclass. One and Done complete all 4 Iron Banner challenges in a single Iron Banner celebration. And Down Dear Friend, defeat 200 Guardians in Iron Banner, and bonus progress for using Iron Banner weapons from the current season. Season the Wish Iron Banner brings with it new rewards to collect, including the Iron Banana Emblem Tributary, and the Legendary Shader Biochrome Oasis. The two featured Iron Banner weapons this season are, the Lethal Abundance Strand High Impact Frame Auto Rifle, which has a base impact of 33, range of 80 and stability of 31. In column 1 it can roll with a new trait called Slice, where casting your class ability allows weapons to sever targets on a hit for a brief duration, with Keep Away and Dynamic Sway Reduction. And in column 2 it can roll with Onslaught, Tap the Trigger and Target Lock. And the Wristwalker Kinetic Lightweight Frame Shotgun, which has a base impact of 65, a range of 45 and stability of 43. It can roll with Slideways, Killing Wind and Discord, with Opening Shot, Adagio and Iron Reach. Both weapons have the origin perk of Skulking Wolf, while at low health Guardian Final Blows with the weapon grant enhanced radar and remove you from the opposing radar. Delightful. Zone Control also makes a return in the Party Relentless playlist. Zone Control is a 6v6 game mode which emphasizes team based gameplay in capturing zones and not kills. Zone Control forces players to collaborate more actively in capturing and defending zones. Capturing zones dramatically takes longer if only one player tries to do it themselves, with it taking 22.5 seconds to capture the point whereas two can capture within 10 seconds. Three or more players will capture the zone in 7.5 seconds. Beyond that, capturing a zone will net the team one point per capture, 
and holding on to the point will reward 2 points every 15 seconds per zone, making it essential to lock down areas rather than float between them carelessly. The first team to 125 points wins. Elimination will also be available in the 3v3 playlist. Elimination is a 3v3 game mode that focuses on eliminating the enemy team. Teammates can revive each other, but cannot revive themselves. The first team to eliminate the other team wins the round. If neither team have been eliminated after 2 minutes, then a control point will spawn somewhere on the map. The team that captures the point will win the round. If neither team can capture the point, then whichever guardian is closest to the centre of the point will win the round. Heavy ammo will spawn in the round after a team has won 3 rounds. The first team to win 5 rounds wins the match. Plus, available in the Crucible Labs playlist this week will be 3v3 Checkmate Clash. Checkmate Clash has been modified to reflect a fan favourite of the original Destiny, Skirmish, so revives are enabled. Don't forget that the checkmate parameters will be in play, with primary weapon damage being tuned to feel a little differently from the rest of the game. Players also have increased health, but the passive regeneration of grenade, melee and class abilities have all been reduced by 15%, and supers by 20. You will now spawn in with 2 special ammo per game, but you will have to earn additional ammo by generating points from kills, assists, deaths, zone captures and gathering heavy ammo. You won't lose points accumulated on death and special ammo you earn persists through lives and rounds. Additionally, you will not drop special ammo on death. That is amazing. This week we'll see bonus crucible ranks available all week long. And that's it for the ninth week of Season of the Wish. Thank you for watching. Allons-y. Guardian down.